Hi everyone, this is Anna, one of your consumer technology specialists at Midcontinent Public Library. Today we are going to continue our WordPress start to finish series by looking at how we can add different media to our website. So right now we are on our dashboard page on WordPress. This is what I see when I log into the site. I am going to look on the left side column on my screen and find media on the list. So I'm going to click on media to open my media management page. And this is where I can see what I've already uploaded to use on my site, as well as where I can add new media that I want to include. Notice there are tabs at the top to separate out different types of media. So we are looking at the all tab right now, but I can also choose images, documents, videos, and even audio. Video and audio both have notes saying that they are premium features. I still will be able to demonstrate one way that you can add video to your site. So we'll do that in a few minutes. But going back to the All tab, when I set up the homepage of this site, I added this image of the bookshelves from Pexels. So if I click on the image icon that's kind of in the upper left area of my screen, I can see there is a drop down and it's the same drop down that I saw on my homepage when I was updating the photo. So I have options for Media Library, Google Photos, Pexels Free Photos, or Openverse Free Photos. Pexels and Openverse are both copyright free image sites, so they're good choices if you're wanting to add something like a stock photo rather than a personal photo. I'm actually going to not click on this drop down, but click this button that says Add New, and it opens up my media library through File Explorer. So this is what's on my computer. I'm already in the document folder I want to use, but I could also use the left side menu to navigate to a different documents folder or my photos folder, wherever I have my media saved, I could get to from here. These images are actually all book reviews and suggested read-alikes that I have made previously. So they go perfectly with the reader's advisory theme of the site but they may look a little different than the types of images that you would be adding to your own site. You still will use the same steps to add any image type file to your site. I'm just going to select a handful of these real quickly and then I will click open. And now they're being uploaded to my media page. And because I have uploaded them, now, if I were to go off and work on this site from a different computer or device, I would still be able to access and work with these specific images because now they're saved to a WordPress cloud. Next, we're gonna go to our Pages Manager. From that left side menu again, I'm going to click Pages to get there. Since the last video, I have added a media page. This is where we're going to put all of our images and our video. So I'm going to click the ellipsis for the more menu on the media page, and then I'm going to choose edit from the drop down. And this page is completely blank except for the title that I added to it. So we can practice using the blocks options as we add our media today. I'm gonna click on the plus sign button over here in the upper left corner to open my blocks options. And first let's actually take a look at the media tab. It looks like from here I can access the images I just uploaded as well as link to Openverse so I'd be able to search for images there. And then if I look at the bottom, I also do have a button to open my media library. I don't want to add just one image though, so I'm going to click back to the blocks tab 
And I just need to scroll down a little bit on this list to see all of my media options. I have a handful of options here to add media to my site. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the gallery option. So what I'll do, I'll just click it and then we can see that the block has been inserted into my page just right underneath that title. So I can go ahead and upload from my computer or those free image sites right from here, or I can select the images from my media library. So I'm gonna click select images, and then I'll choose media library, and then I'm just going to select all these images so that I can add them to the gallery. And then I'll just click insert. And as I look at this gallery, the first two rows look pretty good. On the third row here, I start to notice the text is being cut off on these two images. It's really noticeable because I have text. What is happening is that the site is matching the ratio of the first image on the left side of this row and making the other two fit within that same ratio. And because they're not the same ratio, that's why I get this kind of cut off look. And if I scroll down a little farther, I can also see there's another one that's cut off. And then the one at the bottom here is huge. So the next thing I'm gonna do is select the whole gallery. To do this, I do need to make sure that I don't click on just one image because that's going to give me a floating toolbar for that specific image. But I want to click in the space between the images. And when I do that, you might be able to see there is a thin white line that's going around the entire gallery rather than just the one image, like when I had selected just one. And then I get a different floating toolbar with options for the entire gallery. So the photo icon on the left gives me options to change the layout of the images on the page. So let's see how this looks as a slideshow. In this mode, I have a forward and back arrow on each side and I can scroll through the images and I can see the entire image in slideshow mode, whether it's the same size as the previous image or not. And then back at the top, if I look at the photo icon again, I can also make this gallery a tiled gallery. And this is a really good option for me because I do have those images that are different sizes. The tiles allow the images to be arranged to best fit within the display. So here are those two that were being cut off before, and now I can see the whole thing, even if it is a little small. The next icon on my floating toolbar allows me to change the width of the block in relation to the page. So right now it looks like a line center is selected, but I'm gonna change it to wide width so see how that changed the image tiles again? And I can go ahead and click preview to see how this will look. I'll want to choose preview in a new tab. And when I do that, it looks like it didn't save the wide width option. Um, but you can see here where my title is orange now and the images are displayed just under that. So I am going to actually close this tab to go back to the editor. Now I'm going to change the layout to the slideshow view again so we can see a preview of that. And I'll actually want to click update and that's what actually saves the changes that I've made on the site. So I'll click update and then I'll click preview and preview in new tab. And just like in the editor, I can click through the images in this window. So let's go back to the editor again. And if we look, now the gallery icon in the floating toolbar has changed to a slideshow icon. I can go ahead and click on it and then I can choose tiled gallery again. And see how that changed the little icon back to the gallery? 
When I click on that icon now, I have options to style my tiles. And right now the check mark is on tiled mosaic, which is what allows the tiles to be the different sizes. But let's go ahead and try circles. Uh, this doesn't work with my images very well, but it may work really well if you have something like headshots or just something that you really want the center to be the focus. The square tiles option also doesn't work that well for my images, but it would make every photo in the gallery square. And then the last option, tiled columns, actually does look okay with my images. So I do have a few options that I can try, but I liked the tiled mosaic the best, so I'm gonna choose that option again. And then I'm gonna try to make the wide width again and see if that sticks. I'm going to click update to save my changes and then preview, and then preview in new tab. And it still doesn't like my wide width. Hmm. Well, I do also want to show you that you can click on a photo and it will bring it up in a zoom to fit the screen slideshow type mode. So just like with the slideshow view, I can click the left and right arrows and then when I'm done, I'll just click the X in the upper right corner here to get back to the page view of the gallery. So we are going to close this tab to go back to our editor. And now I'm gonna add a video to this page. So I'm going to click the plus sign to get back to my blocks menu. I'll scroll down to my media section and this time, instead of gallery, I'm gonna choose a video. While we're here, notice that video and video press both have little dots in their upper right corner. These indicate that they're premium blocks. So I won't actually be able to publish this page with the video. It won't show on my published site until I either upgrade or remove the premium block but I can still preview it. So we're going to go ahead and look at our options. I do have options to upload or access my media library. I also have the option to insert from a URL. So I'm gonna choose insert from a URL. You may have noticed I have another tab open to Vimeo. Vimeo is another video hosting website, kind of like YouTube. And I made this book trailer, so I know that it doesn't have any copyright issues. Definitely take that into consideration when adding any media to your site. You want to make sure that they are either personal photos and videos, or they have come from a source that allows them to be shared. I'm going to click the share button on this Vimeo video, and that is the one that looks like a paper airplane. And here I can copy the video's URL, and then I'll just click back to my WordPress tab, and I can paste the URL into the little pop-up field. And look, we have a video on our site now. The video is still hosted on Vimeo, but it's embedded into the WordPress page. So I can click play and watch it if I want. And then I also see just below here, there's a option to add a caption. So I'm just gonna give it a title so that when people come to the site, they know what the video is. And then I'll click update to save again, and then preview, and then preview a new tab. And hey, my wider width finally showed up, <laughs> so that's great. I'll go ahead and scroll down to see that my video is there. And you may notice that part of the caption is missing here. I think that's just a lag in the updating, like what happened with the wide width. I'm gonna go ahead and close the window and double check in my editor that yes, my entire caption is there. And we do have a drop down in our floating toolbar, but nothing on it looks like it can help this.
So I'm gonna click the W WordPress icon in the top left corner, and then I'm gonna click View Pages to get back to my page manager. Let's see what this looks like if we access it from our home page. So I'm opening the home page, and then I'm gonna select Media from my top menu. And when I scroll down, I see that yes, the entire caption is there. We are really starting to see some progress on this site, which is great. And next time, we are going to look at all the different options that WordPress provides for blogs. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure you let us know by following our MCPL 360 page on Facebook and our MCPL MO channel on YouTube. We premiere new videos every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And if you miss the live event, you can always find all of our videos on YouTube on one of our many technology-related playlists on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again next time.